Hey guys, YouTube World Nerd here. All right, and now here I am with another rise and fall of John Hughes review. And now next up, my next review. Now this is going to be a review for the live action One Hundred and One Dalmatians. So, um, yeah, so this movie, uh, it came out in nineteen ninety six. And, uh, yeah, of course, like, it was from Disney, yeah, so, yeah, so, before, like, uh, Disney, like, remade, like, every single one of their animated films in live action, like they're doing now, <laughs> yeah, back in the 90s, Disney only did make, like, maybe, like, two or three live action remakes of, the, like, some, like, uh, their animated films, yeah, there was, like, uh, the... That Jungle Book movie from 1994, and yeah, there was also this movie. I think there may have been another one somewhere. I don't know. Like I think like they did also like kind of like make like another sort of live action uh Jungle Book that film the Jungle Book Mowgli story. Yeah, yeah. And even I guess like technically like in 2000 they did uh like have that uh live action sort of like Pinocchio movie that was uh called Geppetto with Jim Carrey. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, this was like in the line of like one of those like few uh, uh, live action remakes that Disney did of their, of like an animated movie, yeah. But yeah, this is the way that it should be done. Like only like do like maybe like one or a few of them. Like you don't need to remake every single one of them in live action like you're doing now, Disney. I mean, I mean seriously, like... Don't stop remaking every single one. Like, this was how you should have done it. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. So, yeah. So, like I said, like, uh, yeah. After, uh, I guess, like, the Miracle on 34th Street remake. After that, like, I guess, like, Disney, like, called up John Hughes. Asked uh, the, asked him to, like, uh, come write a couple of films for them. And, yeah, this was one of those films. And, yeah. I guess the reason that, uh, like, uh, John Hughes did, like, write a couple of Disney movies, I guess it's because, like, this was, like, still during that time where Disney really did have that run where they really w were making, like, pretty bad live-action movies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I guess, like, because they weren't doing very good, Disney, like, felt that maybe John Hughes could actually change that for them and kind of, like, make better films for them. Now, did he succeed at that? Well, um... To be quite honest, not really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this film, like, uh, this film was one that I really haven't really watched that much. Even when I was a kid, I really didn't watch it that much. Yeah. So, yeah, so, of course, uh, this film is, of course, a live-action remake of Disney's animated 101 Dalmatians from, I think it was 1961. Yeah. Yeah. And to be quite honest, like, like, uh, 101 Dalmatians, even, like, the original animated film, that really has really never been, like, a real favorite of mine. Like, I, I don't really hate it, but, yeah, it's really just not one of my favorites. And I really didn't even really watch it that much growing up. Yeah, I didn't really watch, like, either one. Like, the animated or uh, this one. So, yeah, so 101 Dalmatians, like, whether it is, like, the original animated or the live-action one. Yeah, I've just really not really been too crazy about 101 Dalmatians, you yeah. know? Yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, as a kid when I watched it... uh. Like, uh, when I saw this one, uh, I really didn't think uh, too much of it. Like, it really just, really was just about, like, Dalmatians. That really is, like, what, uh, this movie really is about. It's just really about, like, Dalmatians. So, yeah, so, I've seen, like, uh, Doug Walker's, uh, Disney Summer reviews of both the animated version and this one. And, yeah, he really puts it best. Really just, like, if you like Dalmatians, you'll like this movie. Yeah. Yeah, if you just like to watch, like, uh, animal, like, the, if you just like to see dogs, then, yeah, you could enjoy this movie, yeah. I do like dogs, but just, yeah, this just really was never, like, really my film. Neither one of them really were, yeah. So, yeah, so, actually, before I actually did watch uh, this film, I actually also did put on, like, the anime film before, just so I could kind of, like, take a look at both and just kind of, like, uh, see, like, like, uh, which one really, like, uh, well, just kind of, like, just sort of, like, uh, see, like, how they really do compare to each other, and really just seeing, like, which, 
like what they really do different from each other. Like I know this film like does have like a a couple of uh, pretty uh, significant differences from uh, the uh, uh, animated version. Yeah, and it also does have like a few like a uh, minor differences from uh, the uh, animated film as well. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm sure pretty much all you know like what 101 Dalmatians really is about. Like. It's about a male Dalmatian, and he has, like, a, a male owner named Roger, and, yeah, the, the male Dalmatian's name is Pongo, yeah, and, of course, like, he, like, does want a Roger to really, like, have, like, a love, like, have a woman to love, yeah, and then, yeah, then he does end up, like, seeing, like, a, a female Dalmatian who has a female owner, the female uh, Dalmatian's name is uh, Perdita, and her owner's name is um, Anita, yeah, and then, yeah, then Pongo gets a Roger to meet Anita, and then Pongo also meets uh, Perdita, yeah. Then, yeah, then they, like, fall in love with each other, and then they get together and get, you know, get married, yeah. I've always kind of, like, found, like, the very quick marriage stuff kind of silly, both in uh, the uh, animated version and the live-action version. It's pretty much just like how um, Roger and Anita get uh, married, just, like, immediately after uh, meeting each other, yeah. I've just always found that silly, like... Like, usually, like, when you do meet somebody, it really is, like, a while before they actually do get married. But here, it's just, like, they get married, like, right away, which I really do find silly, yeah? And then, anyway, yeah. And, yeah, and, of course, then, eventually, then, um, Perdita gets pregnant and then gives birth to, like, uh, numerous, uh, Dalmatian puppies, yeah? But, of course, then, we do have, uh, Cruella de Vil, yeah? And then, yeah, then she really is just obsessed with, uh, like, a getting a hold of the puppies, and she's just been kidnapping, like, a whole bunch of uh, Dalmatian puppies to make herself, like, a new fur coat, yeah? And then, yeah, then the uh, Dalmatian puppies, like, they all then, like, end up, like, escaping Cruella, and just, yeah, Pongo and Perdita eventually do, like, uh, save them, and then, yeah, then, yeah, and that is pretty much just the story, and then, yeah, it's like, uh, Cruella is really, like, trying to really, like, chase them down to get them back, but then she get just ends up getting herself into trouble and a whole bunch of mishaps and she is not able to get them back. Yeah. So that is basically like the story for 101 Dalmatians. I mean, both, that really is the story in both um, the animated version and this version. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So as far as like uh, this version goes, like I said, uh, uh, really like, it's not really the, um, really like all that good but i mean it's okay i guess like like i said i know i really have never really been that big into either one of these two films but yeah they're both like, like okay like neither one is terrible yeah they're just really not my films yeah but for this one yeah this one really is just like okay i mean it's not really like absolutely horrible like there are some like a uh, funny moments throughout it like uh, yeah of course like uh this film it has cast members such as uh it has uh, Jeff Daniels, uh, Julie Richardson, Joe Plowright, Hugh Laurie, Mark Williams, and of course, like uh, what this movie is, of course, like really known for, is uh, Glenn Close as Cruella Deville. Yeah, that really is just like the big highlight of this movie, like Cruella Deville. Bill, played by Glenn Close, yeah, and just, yeah, uh, Glenn Close's portrayal of Cruella de Vil, it really has just been, like, a very infamous performance in, in, in Disney films, like, seriously, like, Glenn Close really just does knock it out of the park as Cruella de Vil. like, she really just makes it, like, a totally different, the character of Cruella de Vil, just, like, a totally different character than how she was in the original animated film, like, in the animated film, Cruella de Vil really was just kind of, like, a bitter like, a mean lady, yeah, but in this movie, she really is just, like, a, a, a crazy psychopath, like, just, she's just, like, absolutely, like, a, a, a total nutcase, like, just, she, always doing, like, the maniacal laughter, and really just, like, screaming, like, she's just absolutely, like, nuts in this movie, even, like, her design, like, with, like, her, like, the design of her hair and everything, she's just absolutely crazy, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's all, yeah, so, of course, like, Glenn Close's performance really is probably, like, the highlight of this film, yeah. Yeah, and as far as everybody else, I mean, I do think that everybody else is, like, uh, does the their rules, like, well enough. Like, Jeff Daniels, I guess he does fine as Roger, and Julie Richardson does fine as Anita, yeah. And, uh, of course, um, uh, Corilla's, like, two henchmen, a horse and Jasper, are played by Hugh Laurie and Mark Williams, and... 
I know. I guess they play off each other like a well enough. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So some of the differences that uh, this movie does have from uh, the animated film, like I'll just like go over like a few differences. Like in this version, a uh, Roger is uh, actually American. Yeah. Of course. Like this film is like set in London. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. A John Hughes movie finally is not actually in Chicago, yeah, so, you know, like I told before, like, pretty much, like, every John Hughes film is, like, in Chicago, yeah, even though, like, with Dennis the Menace, like, while it's never actually revealed where that movie is actually set, like, it actually was still filmed in Chicago, yeah, yeah, with this one, this film is actually set in England, so, yeah, so, there's a John Hughes movie that's confirmed that is not set in Chicago, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but anyway, yeah, getting back to the, yeah, so, in this version, uh, Roger is American, of course, like, played by Jeff Daniels, yeah, in the uh, animated film, Roger was still actually a British, but, yeah, here he is American, yeah, and also, like, in the uh, original animated film, Roger was uh, a songwriter, but in this film, he's a, uh, he's a video game designer, yeah, 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 and also, like, uh, in this film, like, there's also, like, a different sort of uh, relationship between Anita and Cruella DeVille than there was in the animated movie. In the animated movie, like, uh, Cruella and Anita really were just, like, uh, old classmates or something, yeah. But in this uh, version, uh, Anita does actually work for Cruella as the film starts. She does eventually get released later on in the movie, but, yeah, it does show that, like, uh, she is actually, like, working for Cruella at the start of the film, yeah. Yeah, and like I said, like, Cruella's, like, a character really is, like, written very differently in this film than uh, she was in the animated film, yeah. And, of course, like, one of the big major differences for this movie is that in the animated film, the dogs and just all the animals in the movie did talk, and in this film, they don't. They're actually, like, the dogs are really just, like, kept silent throughout the movie, yeah. So there were some people that really, like, were really, like, kind of, like, very unhappy about that when this film originally came out. But, yeah, they did at least do something to really, like, uh, like uh, make this film, like, at least, like, do more to really justify its purpose to really, like, give it, like, a different take like that and not really, like, make it, like, exactly like uh, the animated film with, like, the dogs talking. Here they really do actually, like, have the dogs be, like, real dogs. They don't talk, Yeah. Yeah, so I actually do kind of like that, that they really do, like, have the story be presented in two separate ways like that. Keep the dogs silent, like real dogs, in this version, rather than having them talk like they did in the original version, yeah. And something else I really do, like, find interesting about both these versions is that, like, they really do kind of, like, give each version, like, distinction, because... In with the original animated film, like, 101 in the title, it actually was a, a spelled out... Oh, rather than using the digits, yeah. And with the title for this film, they actually do have the the digits for 101, yeah. So, kind of, I find it interesting that they really did give the the film, like, distinction like that, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, but overall, like I said, the film is okay. Like, it pretty, it really does pretty much, like, still follow, like, the exact same story from the original anime film. It really is just in live action, but it's also, like, a told in a different way with the dogs not talking and stuff like that, yeah. So I guess, like, uh, it, the film is okay. I mean, it really is not, like, one of my favorites. And, yeah, as far as a John Hughes movie does go, it is still uh, probably still, like, uh, not really, like, uh, that good by his standards, yeah. But, I mean, it is okay. Like, it is at least, like, a, a step up from uh, Baby's Day Out. So, yeah, so at least it's not a John Hughes' uh, worst movie he ever uh, wrote. Oh, so, yeah, so at least, like, it does have that distinction, at least, yeah. So, yeah, as far as, like, how it really does compare to the animated film, I don't know. Like, like it really comes down to personal preference as to, like, how you really do which one you really do prefer, like, in which way you do, like, the story told better, like, the animated film really does seem to really have, like, the, uh, the, uh, typical Disney uh, formula to it, and, like, with it being animated, I'm sure that there are people that are going to be partial to that one, you know? Yeah, but, yeah, telling it, like, in a different way with this one, with, like, keeping the dog silent and just how, like, Cruella really is just, like, more obsessive and just, like, a, a crazy 
you know, lunatic in uh, this movie. Like, I'm sure that, like, uh, there are, it, there is at least reason to, like, really watch this one as well. Like, it doesn't just, just really, like, it's not like a total shot-for-shot -shot remake of uh, the original, like a lot of the ones that are coming out now. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, I guess, like, the film is at least worth watching to at least, like, see, see like, it, the story told in a different way. And plus, yeah, also with Glenn Close's performance as a Cruella de Vil is also uh, something that really does stand out about the film as well. Like, that really is, like, the true highlight of the film. Yeah. So, overall, like, uh, I guess I would probably give the film probably around, like, uh, I don't know. I guess I would give it probably around uh, 2.25 stars out of 4. Or, yeah, I guess I'll go with that. I'll give it 2.25 stars out of 4. All right. So, uh, yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, I guess I'll just uh, start talking about the premise of the movie. Yeah. So, like I said, the film is set in London. It shows how, like, uh, uh, Roger is a video game designer with his uh, pet Dalmatian, Pongo. Yeah. And it shows that, like, a Roger really is a struggling to actually uh, sell a video game because yeah the video games that he does uh design they just really don't really seem to be like uh, the test plays really don't seem to go very well because there's this uh young kid named herbert who always does kind of like a test run through all of roger's video games but he really doesn't really seem to show much interest in them so yeah so the company that actually like roger does like uh negotiate with to try to sell the games really aren't interested in buying them yeah yeah and then yeah then like i said it shows that like in this version anita does work for cruella deville as a fashion designer <laughs> yeah and it shows that like a cruella really does have a deep passion for fur and it shows that like after like a uh anita did draw a design for some uh fashion for some an, an outfit for Cruella, which did consist of like, like a, a white uh, with a uh, black spots on it, that really did make a, a Cruella really kind of like obsessed with really like uh, making like a a new fur coat in that style, style with uh, spotted fur. Yeah. Yeah. And then meanwhile, then it showed how like uh, as Roger was uh, leaving the uh, game meeting, it showed like how uh, Pongo's leash was uh, tied to the bike Roger was uh, riding. You know, uh, Pongo then eventually did see uh, Anita riding along with her Dalmatian Perdita, and then Pongo then just like ran after to try to get Roger to meet uh, Anita. Yeah. And then yeah, then it just like went out of control, and then yeah, Roger then eventually like uh, fell into a lake, and then. He then uh, was able, met with, uh, well, Pongo then did a meet with uh, Perdita and Anita. Yeah. Then, yeah, then as Roger then, like, caught up, like, he, he mistook uh, Perdita for Pongo and then tried to take her off, but then Anita stopped him. Then when she uh, told Roger that uh, that was her dog and it was a girl, then, yeah, then we got, like, something that does kind of also, like, kind of, like, show, like, how... Like, uh, John Hughes' writing really did change because, yeah, it showed, like, Roger, like, looking under Perdita's leg to see that it was a girl. And you can probably guess, like, what how he judged that, yeah. So, seriously, like, this was seriously something John Hughes wrote. Yeah. But, yeah. But then, yeah, then... <laughs> And after, like, everything, like, was a uh, solve with uh, Roger realizing he was taking the wrong dog, then they... Th Roger and Anita then, like, a uh, formally met and uh, each other yeah then as like they were leaving then Perdita then ran after uh Roger and Pongo and then uh, it ended up throwing Anita into the lake yeah then yeah then late eventually then uh Roger and uh, Anita then saw how Pongo and Perdita really were in love and then then uh, Roger and Anita then like uh, qu very quickly also realized that they were in love with each other also and then decided to get married like I said, I feel that it is, like, especially silly that they got married just, like, basically right after meeting each other. Yeah. But, yeah, they ended up getting married. Yeah. Then shortly after, uh, uh, then, like, uh, they discovered that, uh, Perdita was pregnant. And then shortly after, it was also revealed that Anita was pregnant, too. Yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. Then, and after, like, Cruella then, like, learned of, uh, 
Anita's marriage to Roger, she was, like, kind of disgusted by it. And then, like, uh, she went over to their house, and then she was, like, initially disgusted at uh, them having a baby. But then when, like, she heard that uh, Perdita was uh, pregnant as well, she, like, of course, had excitement with it also, yeah. Then, yeah, then, eventually, then, uh, Perdita ended up uh, giving birth birth uh to um numerous puppies it was like a total of 15 puppies though yeah of course like if you know 101 dalmatians you know that like uh like there was like a small part where like it seemed that one of the puppies had died but then roger and pongo then discovered the puppy was still alive and they named the puppy lucky yeah and i guess i should also mention that uh in this movie of course like there's a uh the nanny who's like basically uh roger and uh Anita's maid, and she's played by Joan Plowright, who also, of course, uh, played uh, Mrs. Wilson in Dennis the Menace. So, interesting to see her again in another John Hughes movie. Yeah. And yeah, then, after the puppies were born, then uh, Cruella paid another visit seeing the puppies, yeah. Then she, like, uh, was offering to um, buy the uh, puppies from Roger and Anita. You know, but... Yeah, they, uh, like, just told her the puppies weren't for sale, even writing them a check for, like, uh, 7,500 pounds. Of course, like, this is in, uh, uh, London, so it's, like, the money currency is pounds, not dollars, yeah? She, and she was even screaming at them to take it, but they just told her that the puppies weren't for sale. And, of course, like, Cruella, like, was just very enraged by that, and then she just uh, fired Anita and vowed revenge against... Roger and Anita, yeah. Then it showed, like, a, a months later, or when the puppies were, like, like, a little more grown, now having spots, yeah. It, like, showed, like, a Pongo, Perdita, and the puppies were, like, watching a couple of Disney movies. Like, it showed they were watching the Aristocats, and then they changed it to Homer Bound, which I thought was, like, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Then, as a... Uh, Roger and Anita were walking in the park with Apongo and Perdita. Then, uh, of course, uh, for those uh, two henchmen, uh, Jasper and Horace, who were played by uh, Hugh Laurie and uh, Mark Williams. Mark Williams is the g actor who played uh, Mr. Weasley in the Harry Potter movie. So, also interesting seeing him here. Yeah, They ended up uh, breaking into the house, and they like uh, locked a nanny away, and then... Like, a stole all 15 of the puppies. Yeah. Then, yeah. Then, eventually, Pongo, Perdita, Roger, and Anita then discovered the puppies all missing. Yeah. And it showed them, like, a... Uh, like, a... They were, like, in the... They were all, like, at the Devil Mansion in uh, the country estate with, 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 like, 84 other Dalmatian puppies that were stolen. Yeah. Then, yeah. Then, like, it was, of course, like, shown that Cruella wanted the uh, puppies killed and skinned to make her new uh, fur coat, yeah? Yeah. Then, yeah. Then, like the anime movie, then when Pongo then, like, used, like, a twilight bark to carry the message of, like, the, the, the puppies missing, and, like, it, the message got through to, like, other dogs and animals, yeah? Then, yeah, then the animals, like, all teamed up to try to... Uh, help the puppies all escape, yeah, and then, yeah, then ev eventually, Anita was able to, like, use, like, her insight, and realize that Cruella was behind the kidnapping of all the puppies, and reported it to the police, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, then, yeah, then it showed there was, like, this, uh, Airedale Terrier that, like, did witness the puppies getting stolen, and then followed uh, Jasper and Horace to the mansion and found all the puppies and helped them, of course, escape under uh, Jasper and Horace's noses, yeah, then, yeah, then, of course, like, as, a pup, as um, Jasper and Horace then discovered the puppies escaping, they, of course, like, went after them, but, yeah, they ended up, like, getting into a whole bunch of uh, situations, such as, like, a uh, falling, in, like, down, like, a uh, falling through floors, and falling into the water, and getting frozen, and all this other stuff, yeah, then, yeah, then when Cruella found out about, um, the puppies escaping, then she just, like, uh, yelled at uh, Jasper and Horace to catch them, but she also, uh, went after the puppies herself, yeah, mm, yeah, 
Yeah. Then, yeah, then eventually, then, then, uh, Corella then were able to, uh, ended up, like, uh, tracking the puppies to, east to a local farm, and then she went after them, but then uh, all the animals at the farm, um, then were just, like, uh, taking down a Corella as the puppies ended up escaping. They ended up, like, a raccoon ended up stealing her hat, and then, a pig ended up falling on her at one point, and then yeah, then they caused a crow to fall into a vat of molasses, and then she got kicked into a pig pen, and, and yeah, then pretty much just like humiliating Cruella, defeating her. Yeah, so yeah, so that's something else that I do like, kind of like, like about this like version that at least in this version, like they at least Cruella is like humiliated in her defeat. In the animated film, all it really was was just how like a. Uh, her car kind of like a swerved out as she was chasing the Dalmatians, and then like they the uh, Dalmatians just escaped. Yeah, so here at least, uh, uh, like they at least did more to really like like a show that Cruella really was defeated and by the Dalmatians. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, then yeah, then uh, po yeah, Pongo and Perdita were of course like were able to like a uh, reunited with her. Uh, all the puppies, and then the police eventually found a Cruella and then arrested her with a Jasper Horace and uh, and uh, Cruella's a Skinner. Yeah, then yeah, then it just like showed that as they were like hauled off to jail, like it showed that there was a skunk that also uh, sprayed them. Yeah, yeah, then yeah, then the police then eventually like discovered all the Dalmatians with Pongo Perdita, the puppies, and all the other ones, yeah, and they really saw that it came to a total of 101 Dalmatians, yeah, then, yeah, then they brought all the uh, Dalmatians home to Roger, Anita, and Nanny, and, yeah, then, like, when, uh, Roger and Anita, like, uh, discovered that, like, the, all those puppies, like, uh, the police were telling them that, like, uh, since they haven't been claimed by their original owners, they'd be going to the pound if they don't have a home. So then, Roger then convinced Anita to adopt all of the, um, puppies. So then, yeah. Then, yeah. Then, the then showed, like, how Roger then got some inspiration to make a new game that did feature, like, Cruella as the villain, which ended up uh, really impressing Herbert. And so then, Roger finally was able to sell uh, one of his games, you yeah. know? And yeah, then with all the money that Roger was able to make from the sale, then Roger, Anita, and Nanny then moved out of London to the countryside, right? And it showed how now they now had a uh, a baby girl, and it showed like all the Dalmatians have like now grown up and have added even more Dalmatians to them, yeah. And then yeah, and that's how the movie ended, yeah. So yeah, so. Like I said, like, uh, this film, like, uh, it's not really, like, all that good, but, I mean, it pretty much does still follow the same formula of the original, so, yeah, so, it still pretty much does tell the story with, like, some, some modifications to it, so, yeah, so, really, like, what it really comes down to is that if you're a fan of this story, and if you like Dalmatians, you'll probably like this movie, but, yeah, if you're not really, like, that big into them, or if that's not really not your thing, yeah, and aside from, the uh, like, a going close to performance as Cruella de Vil, this film probably won't really have much to really offer. And, yeah, that really was how it came off for me. So, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so... So, yeah, so, like I said, I would probably give the film around, like, a... 2.25 stars out of 4, yeah? And, of course, like, uh, this film did end up, like, a spawning a sequel, 102 Dalmatians, a few years later. I think that was in, like, a 2001, I think. I think, yeah... But yeah, but that movie was not written by John Hughes, so yeah, so I'm not going to be talking about that, yeah? So yeah, yeah, so like I said, I give this film 2.25 stars out of 4, alright? So yeah, so yeah, so I guess that's really all I can say about it, alright? So yeah, so this was my review of the live-action 101 Dalmatians, I hope you guys did enjoy it, yeah? And of course, the following year, John Hughes did write another a Disney movie, so yeah, so I'm going to be talking about that up next, and you probably do know what that one is, so stay tuned for that one, alright? But yeah, but that does it for this review. Hope you guys did enjoy, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.